Innovation, of course, can lead to uh, inequalities in, in society. But I do think that inequalities in society uh, have so many cultural and institutional uh, uh, drivers and, and, and framework conditions that shape uh, uh, and drive inequality that innovation is, uh, can be a catalyst in a certain direction. If you look at the trends in inequality, they rose especially in the 1990s. And the 1990s were extremely innovative. That was the whole dot-com revolution. And I think here you have to ask, what is innovation? What are its key characteristics? And how can that help us understand whether it does produce inequalities or not. The ways in which it leads to uh, capacity building or inequality or, uh, or leveling uh, incomes and outcomes uh, is actually quite complicated and it depends on uh, in part the nature of the technology. Certain kinds of technologies are very much enabling technologies that uh, reduce inequality but uh, many of the ones that take uh, investments and resources to use in the first place can greatly contribute to inequality. I think lack of innovation can demonstrably lead to inequalities in society. Whether innovation can, I can't think of examples. Uh, I know that uh, inappropriate uh, application of the outputs of innovation can lead to inequalities for sure. But thinking of things like the digital divide, overall this has been a benefit to society. Uh, the examples I can think of are generally beneficial in reducing inequalities. I think that innovation gives you the opportunities uh, to select whatever you like uh, to have. Uh, and I think innovation doesn't lead to uh, misunderstandings. Uh, I think it's just an option which you can use. Innovation is extremely collective. All sorts of different actors take part. Uh, different types of firms, large and small, different types of state agencies, different types of financial actors. And in fact, it's become an increasingly collective process. This is why now people talk about these ecosystems of innovation being important. Inequality is not necessarily always a bad thing. Just like innovation is not necessarily always a good thing. It's, it's a question of, and that's the role of policy to, to make uh, interventions that would uh, create uh, different distributions and reintroduce equality if that is what society believes is a valuable goal. Generally speaking it's going to be a bad thing uh, because uh, to the extent that we have desirable innovations that lead to better outcomes for people and higher quality of life and they're not accessible to a larger percentage of the population, then certainly that would be a bad thing. I think for some it brought a big benefit, for others it brought a loss. So for some who got a loss, they should be also innovative and maybe create a new legislative framework. That's our job and that's what we do now. My fear is very much that the financial crisis will further lead to a disparity between different member states in the way innovation is considered as a growth enhancing element. And so some countries suffering the most from the financial crisis being in situations not just of fiscal consolidation but fiscal austerity are probably in a situation that they cannot afford anymore to invest in knowledge more broadly and to support innovation more particularly. Innovation certainly doesn't necessarily necessarily lead to inequality. Inequality can be determined by public policy. We can have policies, tax policies and welfare policies which would reduce inequality. Um, innovation has in the past sometimes led to inequality but usually again it's been a, a, a phase through which the economies have gone and ultimately you get out of it.